Hello, everybody. This is Stephen Gardner, best-selling author of Taming Wall Street, and I'm excited to have my special guest, uh, Denzel Rodriguez, the finance geek, uh, Mr. Velocity Banking himself. I've been trying to get him on the phone for uh, a couple of months now and uh, been watching his content on YouTube, which is what we're going to be discussing today, uh, going through uh, a really incredible way to increase your wealth by decreasing your debt and then taking those habits that you've built and parlaying those into building a large nest egg of tax-free money. And so we're, we want to get into that. But uh, Denzel, thank you for being on the call today. Thank you for having me, Stephen. It's a pleasure. Great. So, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of my listeners are probably new to this idea of velocity banking. And, and so I want to get into that. I know that you're also a big believer in cash value life insurance like I am. But uh, how, did you, how did you personally come across velocity banking? So for me, velocity banking started before I even know, before I even knew I was doing it, right? Uh, which started right around the age of uh, 18, 19 years old when I got my first credit card. I somehow put two and two together that if I ran my expenses through a credit card, got cash back rewards, uh, and then just paid myself back in full, that that would be no issue. Um, now, in my case, I actually had to do these things because I was living in a household, uh, you know, low income family where, you know, it's just my mom, my stepdad, myself, and, you know, the two of them are, are working real hard, working paycheck to paycheck. And every now and then they would ask me for help, whether it was to pay a bill or whatever the case may be. And every single time they asked me for, for help financially, if I didn't actually have the cash, what I would do is I would give them my credit card here, swipe the card to pay for the groceries or pay for the gas or the insurance. And then that would buy me 30 days before I had to pay that back. Okay. Meanwhile, I still had my cash to you know, pay for the things that I had to pay for, like my own bills that had to be paid with cash. Yeah. And by having that 30-day window, I was projecting, well, I'm going to make two more paychecks you know, or, or four paychecks or whatever it was. And I just did the math. And I said, well, as long as I keep working the way I'm working, I'll be able to pay that card in full. And then when my family decides to pay me back, which was, you know, always up in the air, you never know when your family members are going to pay you back, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, so um, I I didn't count on that, but that was my, you know, that was the benefit of me, you know, doing that, such a a, a move where you're simply, you know, running your expenses through a credit card and paying yourself back. Now, fast forward a couple more years after doing this, I got a couple of credit cards. You know, I'm 20, 21 years old. I have a steady job. And then I come across, you know, uh, obtaining a line of credit. I had to, I had to borrow money because I wanted to uh, go through this course that was going to teach me how to invest in Forex currency. Okay. And from Instead of me getting a loan like everyone else does in the world, I, I decided to go get a line of credit. I don't know what on earth told me to get a line of credit. I usually credit God for these things that are just unexplainable, but it was one of the best things I ever did in terms of my finances. I was able to now leverage this line of credit to pay for something that I needed or, or you know, pay for a vehicle or whatever it is, right? And I, I figured, well – just like I was doing with the credit card, what what if I could put all my income into this line of credit and just have the money sit there? This way I don't pay anything in interest. So I had this, you know, at 21, 22 years old, I had this $5,000 line of credit. Every time I took money out to use it to buy a course or pay for something or give money to my family, I would dump all my income into the line of credit so I don't pay any interest. And then I would just take the money right back out as I needed it to pay my bills, you know? Okay. And so now I've got the credit card and I've got this line of credit that I'm using. I'm using the credit card to buy me 30 days to pay my bills. And now I've got this line of credit as additional support to pay off any other, you know, like bad debts that I had. And, 
you know, so here I am just doing all this stuff. I had no idea what I was doing until I started networking um, and, and hanging out with real estate investors. And I was showing them what I was doing. And one of them said, oh, you're doing velocity banking. That, that's, that's velocity banking. Real estate investors do that to pay off mortgages in five to seven years or flip properties. And I'm like, what? Like, that's that sounds amazing. <laughs> And then with a little bit of research, uh, you know, going on YouTube, I discovered, I was like, holy crap, there's really nobody talking about this. Maybe like four or five channels yeah. that are covering it. And this was a couple of years back. And so I'm just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Why is nobody talking about this? You know, uh, and, and come to find out the concept, you know, it's it's foreign. So it's a foreign concept it doesn't come from the U.S. So that explains one thing. And then the other thing is that the the concept itself, in terms of learning it, uh, it's very hard to come across people that know it. Number one, can teach it. Number two, and are willing to you know uh, invest time with you to, to yeah. teach you, or you know you have to pay them very very high fees. And so I, I found an opportunity there to just you know I figured well I already know it because I'm yeah. It. So it's like it's crazy. No one taught me the concept. In fact, I and this is where I credit God. Right? I think God put that wisdom in me to understand just how money works in the 21st century when it comes to debt and yeah. currency, and how to really use one dollar more than once, right? And, and that was a possibility, and I just went from there. So that's that's really the background how I came yeah. to the concept. No, I, I I appreciate that, and you know, sadly, uh, not, none of this stuff is taught in school. Uh, you know, at, at almost at any level, unless you specifically seek out a mentor. I mean, I, I went uh, all the way up through, you know, biz business school at the David Eccles School of Business at the University of Utah. I I'm telling you, it's not discussed. I took advanced finance, CPA courses, investing courses, and uh, it, it's just it, it's not taught basic money is not taught these right. uh tricks that the wealthy use i don't even want to call them tricks just strategies it's just having a yeah. plan and a strategy and an understanding and, and that's why you know i I've, I've liked your channel on youtube so much is you know you go through and explain it really well on the whiteboard and and, and i love that okay so just as best you can concisely in a nutshell what is velocity banking and why does it help people get out of debt so fast? Yeah, so velocity banking is a financial concept that you can use for your own personal or business finances to help you pay off debt, increase cash flow, build credit, lower your expenses all at the same time simultaneously. What Essentially what we're trying to do is save immense amount of money on the interest that you're being charged on all of your debts your mortgage, your student loans, your cars, et cetera. All I'm doing is shifting all of that debt over to what's, what's called a debt tool, being a line of credit, a credit card, or a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. This is for homeowners that have equity in their property. These are the three uh, types of tools that can be used to pay off debt rapidly. These are, these are banking products. And the major difference is that you have simple interest and you have amortized interest. And all I'm trying to do is shift the amount of interest that you pay on those debts over to no interest, to literally borrow money at zero borrowing costs. And what that does is that helps me pay off the debt that much faster, which increases my cash flow that much faster, which allows me to you know, continue to hit the next and the next debt as we move forward. So Velocity Banking shows you how to use $1 more than once. So when I, whenever I'm talking to someone new that comes across the concept, I always ask them the question is, can you use $1 more than once? Is that a possibility, yes or no? If they tell me no, then, then there's a barrier, right? And I just got to get past that. But once they realize that, holy crap, that I can use $1 more than once and if you can use one dollar more than once like two and three and four five times over well what could you do with 
thousand dollars, with five thousand dollars, with ten thousand dollars, and on and on. And so what ends up happening is you begin to see that there's good debt and bad debt. Velocity banking teaches you how to use good debt to pay off bad debt, save a ton of money in interest, and recoup all your cash flow in that same process at a faster rate. And when we're running examples, my primary goal is to beat debt snowball because that's the only other concept out there that shows you how to pay off debt is either debt snowball or debt avalanche. And so Velocity Banking says, hey, if you can be debt-free in 10 to 13 years doing debt snowball, I can do it in five to seven. So usually 50% faster on average. Yeah, and that's how I came across it. You know, we paid off all of our debt except for our home, oh gosh, six or seven years ago, but it was following the Dave Ramsey method. And, um, but, you know, as I started to learn about the, the velocity banking uh, with mortgages and, and uh, you know, utilizing a, a, a line of credit as um, a weapon instead of a shield, uh, my eyes were just open. And I, I remember telling my wife, you know, we could have got out of debt a lot faster because what people don't realize is, you know, when you make a payment to a mortgage or a car or, um, you know, some kind of a debt, they, they, know, they know in their mind that some of that's going to interest, but they may not know just how much of it is, right? So like if your mortgage is a thousand bucks, you, you may not realize that 800 of that is interest. And so, uh, you know, you're only paying down two hundred dollars not the full thousand but if you could you know rob peter to pay paul legally and it all works out for everybody uh and then all of a sudden you you have a bigger portion of that money you know driving down the the debt that's where for me it's like wow this gets really really powerful um so i i just i love what you're doing with showing people how to do that um now you you know based on your background and all of the many, many people that you work with, maybe speak for a minute uh, to people that are listening to this. Why is it so important to become a good saver early on? And why is it important to, to get rid of that debt as quick as you can? So from a fundamental standpoint, saving money is a, is a great uh, you know, discipline to have. One of the things I, I often share with my clients is, you know, to live on 70% of what you make. You've got 10% that goes towards savings, 10% to taxes, and then 10% towards your tithes, your offerings, givings, et cetera, things like that. Just just having the principle down of saving, just that alone can create immense amount of wealth. Now, the real question comes in is where do I save that money? Right, And that is what I like to challenge in the 21st century is not only do I want to learn how to save money, but I also need to ask the question on where do I save money. And so both are very important, especially if you start early. So I personally, I'm 23 years old, and I've already saved well over 50% of my income. So even though I say you know, the general rule is you know, live on 70% of uh, what you make – um, but because of the position that I'm in, the opportunity, the authority that I have, that I'm able to help people with their finances and I'm in this industry where I'm able to create immense amount of wealth for myself, I took it a step further and I flipped it. I decided to live on 30% and save 70. You know, wow. of, of, the, of the 70, X goes towards giving, uh, taxes, and then savings, of course. And then yeah. where I and then where I save that money is a whole different ball game, you know. So so starting at an early age is very important. Just getting that principle down. This is something that I teach my students when I'm volunteering at public schools, teaching middle school students is just just that idea of saving that principle, being able to hold on to money and know when to execute that money properly, when to use it properly. Yeah, I I think. Um a lot of people don't know how to create a vision for their money, right? So somebody gets, let's say 500 bucks and they can save that and they look at their bank statement and they're like, okay, I'm going to earn 0.1%. And, 
And so they go, forget about it. And, and then they just go spend it, right? And, uh, but they don't have a vision that, okay, wait a minute. If I saved that $500 every month and was able to get compound interest, by the time I get to age 70, I have so many hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay, yeah, now I, I, I want to save that money. But I, I think because interest rates have been so low uh, that I, I think people have lost that vision or that understanding uh, for how their money could grow and be used to their advantage in real estate or cash value life insurance or owning their own debt or, you know, starting a business, uh, whatever it might be. I, I think there's the lack of education. But there's also yeah. that lack of vision and understanding of what something could do. You know, you, if you applied this consistently over and over again, where does that get you 10, 20, 30 years from now? People don't know. They don't know how to do that. They don't know how to have that vision anymore. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay. Let's switch gears uh, just briefly. So, uh, you know, from our discussions and, and things that I've seen on the, the channel, we're both, you know, big fans of being your own bank, the infinite banking concept. Uh, this is what I do professionally with, with uh, you know, mostly doctors or who I work with, uh, you know, showing them how to build a large pool of tax-free money that can never lose, that compounds and grows every year, um, and, and then works like a, a line of credit for other areas of your life. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think, uh, you know, as you've worked through people or with people, why, why do you think people are drawn to this concept of being their own bank or, or uh, you know, th this infinite banking concept? Why, why do you think people are drawn to that? Um, I think it's primarily due to the way I position the conversation uh, with all of my clients. So everyone that reaches my channel or people that are clients of mine are coming for the velocity banking. They, they hear and see that, oh, uh, I can pay off your mortgage in five to seven years rather than the 30 year or a 20 year or 15 year. Right. And, 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 and just that alone excites them. So once they learn the concept of velocity banking and they say, okay, I can use the bank's money to pay off my bad debt and recoup all my cash flow in the process. My next conversation with them after they've understood the concept and they're applying it is I say, Hey, what if you could, establish your own bank, borrow from your own self, establish your own line of credit and actually get paid to do it. And then in the process, if anything goes down, if anything happens to your life, right, the tragedy happens, that you'll receive a large tax-free death benefit to your family. So this creates a layer of protection. It it sparks a new way of being in terms of how you save money, where you save money, and how you manage your finances. And it, it, it expands that question even further is, can I use $1 more than once? Yeah. When you're talking about infinite banking, you're stepping into using money like seven, eight, nine, ten times over, the same dollar over and over and over again. It's like you never – lose the money once you once it passes through cash value life insurance so it when i'm working with clients i take them through three phases and the first phase is velocity banking hey let's pay off all your debt really fast let's get your cash flow up let's get your capital uh accessibility up in terms of credit and your leverage capability and once we get all that going then i'm like hey let's look at this infinite banking concept becoming your own bank so we can become free from the banking system itself entirely. Like there's a way to do that, right? And not have to uh, uh, hope and pray for one, two, three percent returns, you know, whether yeah. it be in the market um, and because the interest rates are low. Well, you don't have to worry about that with cash value life insurance. You're able to, you know, receive uh, tax-free benefits. And, and this is another blockage that people have is they don't know the difference between earning 12% with tax versus maybe half that percent without tax. Yeah. Now, when I ask people, which one would you rather have, the 12% return with tax or the 6% without tax, you know, consistently and guaranteed every single time, 
you know, and some, a lot of people end up always just go for the 12 and they don't realize just how much money you're going to pay in fees and taxes. You're going to end up with a net return of 6% or even less or much less, yeah. you know, whereas I could have just got rid of all that by just having a, a tax-free gain of a solid six or solid four, or solid five my whole entire life in addition yeah. to, you know, a death benefit being the cash value life insurance. So it's a very, very attractive conversation, especially for my older clients that are in their, you know, late fifties and sixties. They just find it amazing because they can actually leave something behind for their children. Even yeah. if they have a quarter million, half a million in debt, you know, that there is a way out that they could, you know, clean the, clean the page, you know, have, have, have people start fresh. So if something happens to them and they die with all this debt, they don't have to worry about it transferring to their kids. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's such a huge thing is, you know, I, I tell people all the time, like if I don't have four decades to build wealth uh, and I die, then my family's taken care of. But if I live then I've been compounding my money for decades. I'm going to have a nice nest egg of money that I can then take a tax-free stream of income off of. Uh, but all along the way, my money isn't tied up like with an IRA or a 401k. So, you know, my wife and I, we've been able to do multiple cars through our plan, uh, you know, different real estate, uh, hard money lending or rental properties. Uh, we've taken vacations. I, I mean, we've done quite a few things uh, with our plan. But if I die, you know, my, my family's taken care of and, and that's a, that's a big deal. Um, so, um, okay. Uh, I, I see, you know, you're big on the line of credit. I see these cash value plans and they do take a couple years to get up, right? You got to capitalize it just like a business, give it a few years to grow. And, and, uh, but, uh, I see the, that as one of the greatest lines of credit that is out there. What, what are your thoughts on, on that as, as one of these lines of credit? Oh, I, I agree with that 100%. So originally I said that there's three types of, of credit lines. There really is a fourth being the cash value life insurance. But for most people that are average working Americans, you know, 50, 75K a year or less, it sometimes is not ideal right away. So that's where velocity banking comes in. Yeah. And when I'm working with clients, literally I'm, I'm simply positioning them to not only become debt free, but to also start the infinite banking and start the policy up at some point. That is one of the goals as, you know, moving into like phase two. So phase one's velocity banking, phase two is infinite banking. At some point I'm going to tell them, Hey, it makes more sense to borrow from yourself not pay any interest whatsoever, keep all your cash flow in the process, and protect your life all at the same time. Again, money, $1 being used more than once, right? Yeah. So I'm in total 100% uh, agreeing that uh, cash value life insurance is a line of credit once you get it up to a certain amount. Um, and what I do to fast track that process is I leverage people's debt tools like their HELOC or a line of credit, or even credit cards. Uh, I personally, when I started my cash value life insurance policy, I put 70000 into my tax-free bank, which of that amount, 61000 showed up in cash value after you know, the premiums and the expense charge of, of the yeah. life insurance itself. But the way I actually got all that money was I used my cash flow, my savings. I pulled from a credit card at 0% for 12 months. didn't cost me anything to do that. And I pulled from a line of credit, which was minimal uh, interest costs, very, very minimal. And I, I did the math. I basically said, well, if I put all this money in there, at the end of the year, I'm going to earn maybe 4 to 6% return on, on that 61 k yeah. Whatever I earn is going to offset whatever I borrowed. And now that money is mine forever. And now I've got a $60,000 line of credit. There's no need for me to use my personal line of credit anymore at the 9 or 12% rate that it's at. You know, yeah, and that, and I think that's, you know, you bring up a good point because it, it's like, okay, would you want to save five hundred dollars a month 
until you have 60 grand and then get that money working? Or would it be better to have 25, 30, 40, 50, 60 grand working right now and then paying off that line of credit with money that loses value every day, right? Exactly. To inflation and and so it's like that 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 cash flow has to stay consistent, but it's with a debt instrument that's losing buying power. Where if you could be, do a big chunk of money and get that earning a much higher rate than a bank can offer at this point, and probably for you know at least another ten years, they have no idea how to raise interest rates, um, but. Uh, you know, you get that money growing and compounding over time, uh, and then you're using your cash flow to pay that off with money that's losing value. So, um, you know, I think I think that's really neat. And you know, I know probably a portion of the people that you work with, you know, getting out of debt has got to be their has got to be their number one priority. But I, I'm I'm guessing there's people you come across where you, they can say, okay. I need to take a portion of my money and start building some wealth now and a portion of that driving down the debt. Do you see where those two can complement each other at the same time? Yes. Um, I have a criteria for myself as a ethical life insurance agent um, before I you know, am willing to write a policy for someone. I want to make sure that they can actually fund the thing consistently year after year after year, right? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, it, when I when you're talking about complementing each other, velocity banking and infinite banking together, and I've done videos on this, is there comes a point where, you know, I help this mom wipe out all her credit cards, her car loans, student loans. The only thing she has left is the mortgage, right? Something big. Um, based on her amount of cash flow, her credit line accessibility, and if she has other retirement vehicles such as like a 401k or IRA, like you mentioned before. What we might end up doing because her mind has shifted in terms of how she's going to use her money is she might say, well, you know what? It doesn't make any sense for me to have my money at risk at the market. Uh, let me just pull all that money out and I can start redirecting. This is a, a, a term that I use often to increase cash flow or to build up a life insurance policy is I'll redirect assets into a tax-free asset, which I'll then borrow from to pay off that mortgage at a super fast rate because just by having the debt shifted from the mortgage company to yourself, understand that whatever I'm being charged by the insurance company, I'm going to get it all back no matter what. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to get more than what they're charging me. And that's how, you know, if you're working with an insurance company that, that structures it properly and you have a, you have a properly designed policy for high cash value uh, uh, returns and dividends, then you could literally keep a, a $250,000 debt mortgage in that life insurance policy, but you'll also be earning $250,000, uh, you know, 4% on $250,000, yeah. even though it's sitting there. And then you can keep funding the policy, right? And, just and, that, and that's all your where, money there, so it's yeah, and that's where if people incredible. really understand uh, compound interest over time versus simple interest being paid back over time, compound win interest wins every time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, getting that money in uh, and and letting it be credited, and then start earning that uninterrupted compounding interest, but then you can take it right back out to go get rid of some of these higher debts and different things. Exactly. So, um, yeah, it's uh, there should be a, a term velocity, infinite velocity banking or something. You know <laughs> what I mean? Someone's got to come up with something like that. Yep. But um, yeah, the two just complement each other uh, they really so do. well. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I love that you were you know willing to get on the phone and, and go over this uh, so I can make this introduction to people. Um, how how do people find you? What What's the YouTube channel? so that they can learn about this velocity banking for themselves? It's my name, uh, Denzel Rodriguez. But if you just typed in velocity banking, I do rank pretty high on the okay. first page. So you'll you'll see me there. Uh, there's a couple of other guys that, um, that also talk about velocity banking. Um, but there's really, there's still to this day, there's very few channels that 
talk about velocity. You're, banking. you're the you're the one to talk to. They don't they don't need to talk to those other guys. Yeah. Right? You're the man. I've um, watched the videos. I've seen the other guys. Uh, you're you're the one that they they want to connect with if they need that mentoring and and help. Um, you know, I, Denzel. I just I want to I, I want to thank you for taking time to get on this call and uh, share this information. Let me introduce people. Uh, over to this velocity banking concept. Um, any any last words of wisdom before we before we sign off? Yeah, you know, uh, again, that that fundamental concept, living on seventy percent of your income, could be a drastic change in your life in terms of paying off your debt. Just doing a simple shift like that, looking into the velocity banking concept, see how it can work for your life. Eventually, upgrading into infinite banking and then building a kingdom that will last forever in your life. And that's something that I personally uh, love to do with all my clients is focus on that end goal, that, that purpose-driven life, which is to build a kingdom in your own household, in your own economy. You're literally creating your own economy in the United States where you have the most amount of opportunity ever in the world, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, no, that's that what I would leave people with is, you know, build a kingdom – get your finances in order and really commit to uh, surrendering what you think you know about money, right? And, and your ability to unlearn and relearn what you think you know about money. No, that, that's great. I, one of the reasons I went into business for myself, uh, I don't use the word kingdom, but I use the word empire. I got tired of building somebody else's empire. Um, right. and, and I wanted to have control of, my schedule, my money, uh, you know, where, where I focus my time. So I love that. Um, everybody listening to this call, uh, thank you for hanging in there with us. And, and, uh, we, we appreciate Denzel taking time out of his very busy schedule to be on with us. If there's anything I can do to help you, um, you know, please reach out to me. Um, again, this is Stephen Gardner, author of Taming Wall Street with my special guest, uh, Denzel. You can find him on YouTube. Uh, look up Velocity Banking. He's the guy with the cool beard, a young guy. And uh, thank you again, Denzel, for being on today's call. Thank you, sir. God bless. Bye-bye.